Rachel, right? Yeah. Rachel? Yeah. And then uh, what do you do for EZO? Um, oh, I work in marketing communications for EZO Corporate um, in Japan, which is our headquarters. Uh, we also have offices all over the world, uh, including the U.S. right here in Cypress, California. Okay. Um, so uh, today in our booth, uh, we are showing our full lineup of Color Edge monitors for color okay. management solutions. I guess like, so. For color Edge, because there, you guys have a few different lines. Like there's yes. Color Edge. There is. Uh, what else do you like other major lines for monitors? Yeah, well, within Color Edge, we have um, two different series. There's a CS series and a CG series okay. of different monitors. CS is more kind of uh, entry and intermediate level for um, hobby creatives. Okay. Uh, and CG series is more the professional line with uh, different features and functions. So I guess like, for hobbyists and creatives, uh, like what are you like going to the CS line? Like what do you not get that you get in the CG line? Well, what comes with only the CG monitors uh, is a, a pop-up internal calibration sensor, which pops oh, okay. right over the screen. So you can do automatic calibration through our unique color navigator uh, software, okay. which comes with all of our Color Edge monitors. Um, and like, like I said, that can be an automated process, so you just you don't have to worry about the color, nav or color management at all. Okay. Um, you just click a button, it'll automatically uh, recalibrate any time that you need. So I guess like I have seen this thing before. Like it was just popping out. I think um, yeah. Like it's like in this little bump in the top there. Yeah, right? like yeah. It a pops little, out from here. Um, yeah. So it's right under here under is a logo. There's a little calibration sensor. It just pops right on the screen. It takes up really minimal amount of space here, okay. just a couple of millimeters. Um, so it's really. Um, not intrusive at all. Okay, interesting. And I guess like who who actually makes that spectrophotometer? Can you <laughs> say, or do you guys do it in house completely? Are you working with a larger manufacturer? Um, I don't know if I can answer that one actually. Okay. So, so but can you just say it's in house, or can you say it's someone yeah. else? Um, that well, you're all working of our monitors that we make are made in house. Okay. Uh, in Japan. We have a in production. Including the LCD element itself, or are you sourcing that yes. from someone else? Yes. Oh, really? So everything. Oh, the the, uh, the panel. You mean. Yeah, the panel. Uh, the, the panel panel comes from, from a different. Okay, but you're doing but all the, the other. The monitor universe. that we build uh, is all done uh, in our factory in Japan, and we also have factories uh, in China and in Germany as well for different lines. Okay, interesting. Cool. Um, anyhow, it looks like that area is cleared up. Okay, we'll go over so here. You want to, yeah, sure. Yeah, all right. So, so new in our booth this year is our what we're calling Coleridge Prominence CG3145. Okay. Uh, and this is a true HDR reference monitor for professional color grading. Um, if you're not familiar with HDR, that stands for High Dynamic Range. Uh, it is basically uh, a range of brightness that approximates uh, the brightness that we can perceive with uh, the human eye. Um, so we might be able to see, um, just figuratively, uh, this much in terms of this being the darkest, this being the lightest. Uh, typical monitors, which are SDR, standard dynamic range, may only be able to reproduce this much. And um, that's a limitation of the technology. With an uh, HDR monitor, we can get very, very close to how the human eye perceives light and dark on the screen. I guess like in terms of, uh, this should in some way translate to contrast ratio. Right? Yes, So like yes. we're talking about like a high contrast ratio. Absolutely. I so guess like how high a contrast ratio are we talking about? This one has a typical contrast ratio of one million to one. Okay, and then this is not like you turn off the monitor and you measure it and then you turn on the monitor at full brightness and you measure it, or how exactly are you measuring that typically? Or is it a variable um, brightness that goes through? Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a dynamic right, uh, okay. dynamic contrast ratio, which you see in HDR uh, TVs and whatnot. It is a typical contrast ratio. So the black is uh, point, uh, I can't remember the exact figure. Uh, it's very, very, very low. Um, so it's very deep, very deep black. Okay, and then that's, again, like that contrast ratio is measured at a, like what kind of brightness, like what kind of typical luminous level? Like 120, 140 candela per square meter, or are you having to like lose the brightness significantly in order to achieve that kind of contrast ratio? I mean, I, yeah, I'm not sure. I can really answer the question. So, okay. sorry. That's cool. yeah. uh, I guess like what allows the screen to show that kind of contrast ratio? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, this looks like a pretty typical monitor, other than the yeah. fact that it's even thicker yeah. than okay. the monitors we're well, using. This is a prototype, so um, this is not the final final design. And there's actually a little bit more tweaking that's going to be done with the specifications as well. Cool. Um, but uh, before we kind of go into more of the contrast thing, uh, this on the other side of the spectrum achieves a high brightness of 1,000 candles, okay. uh, typical. Um, so you've got both the really, really lows and both the really, really highs together. And we can achieve that basically by um, uh, yeah, 
I, I'm not sure if I can actually s say it. Um, I, I know, but I'm not sure if we can really release it. To oh, as in like you're not supposed to say yeah, it on yeah, camera? Yeah, oh, so, okay, yeah, that's yeah, okay. Yeah, so there, there we, is like, some trade secret? Can we kind of cut some of the, yeah. Yeah, sort of, I'm not really sure, because I mean, we just announced it, so okay. I'm not really sure how much we could really explain. We'll, we'll about chat about this after the video, maybe. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I would love to come back to talk about that. Okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So just, there is some proprietary technology that magically makes this. Yeah, there's there's some of it, um, we're, you know, at, at a trade show like this, we'll, we'll go into a little bit more depth when we're talking to you know, potential customers and things like that. Okay. But some things we kind of keep a little bit more, uh, uh, I guess, kind of on the quieter side when we, in terms of officially publishing things. Okay, so, so, things. so I guess, like, when yeah. will this monitor actually be released? Um, it is slated to be um, ready by the end of this year for shipping, okay. end of 2017, so maybe November, November December. Okay. Um, and that's uh, shipping from Japan, uh, okay. where it's going to be produced. So for the rest of the world, depending on the country, um, maybe around early 2018. Uh, and at the price point, do we have okay. something? Uh, price hasn't been determined yet, um, so that will also be released later. At the end of the Can you give me like something plus or minus a thousand dollars somewhere? Uh, in there? I can't really say right now, okay. but um, but it is a high-end monitor, so uh, we're we're expecting it to answer a lot of the the needs for the market. But it's going to be. Uh, a will there be so. will there be an integrated spectrophotometer as well? In there the will not version? be in this one. Okay. Actually, so. And is the reason because that the spectrophotometry hardware is not capable of accurately measuring color for high dynamic yeah. range monitor? Uh, it's not for that, but um, it is for uh, ensuring the long longevity uh, of the monitor and the uh, calibration sensor itself. It, the, oh, this okay. one, so I, are you finding the calibration sensors yeah. are wearing out on the rest of the CG line? Oh, no, no, happening? not with, with everything else, it's fine. This is a very, very high spec uh, kind of power horse uh, as well, so it requires quite quite a little bit, uh, quite a lot, so um, we haven't put a, a calibrator in. So I guess like, uh, so power as in like, it consumes a lot of power to um, like I say, the, the, to yeah, the power consumption. I think those figures are actually TBD uh, oh, okay. at the moment. But because it's a, we've got such a high brightness, a high contrast, it it it's um, it's a more powerful machine overall than compared to uh, another standard monitor. Okay. So. Interesting. Okay, cool. So that is what is new. Uh, oh, and resolution numbers. Okay, so uh, like is, true DCI 4K. Yeah, it is 4K, uh, 4096 by 2160 pixels. Okay, cool. And I guess, again, judging by the size of this thing, like, I mean, like, is this going to be as heavy as it looks um, when it's done? That remains to be seen. Um, so <laughs> I'm actually excited to see what our team's going to come up with because, um, like I said, it is a prototype, but um, because of the technology involved in it, um, I'm, I'm not really sure how they're how we're going to end up with the final uh, figure in the end. So. Fair enough. Um, I guess, like... Why? I mean, like, it looks like you guys are still sticking with like regular LCD technology. I'm yeah. assuming it's LED backlit still. Uh -huh. uh, but why? You know, why not OLED? Why not some other kind of display? Right. Well, this particular monitor has um, some significant advantages over OLED. Um, so it is again an LCD, okay. uh, and it is the first LCD to achieve the uh, specifications that it does with the one million contrast ratio. Okay. Um, and the two biggest advantages that it has uh, is compared to OLED. Uh, OLED has a uh, what's called ABL auto brightness limiter technology um, and what that is is when you have a scene that is uh, largely white or has uh, a lot of bright image uh, in it, uh, it the screen has to dim uh, in order for it to uh, not burn out, essentially. So it's right. to preserve the longevity of the machine. Yes. Now, we were able to uh, achieve the high brightness and maintain that high brightness without the ABL. So throughout the entire time you're viewing your content, uh, it's not dimming the light, so therefore the color and the brightness is consistent all the way through when you're looking at it. Because when it dims down, you're losing color value uh, each time it does that. Okay. So, But you're talking about like the dimming... You know, like, when does the dimming actually kick in for an OLED? Yeah. I mean, like, under normal proving conditions, we're not using the screen that bright. Right, right. So, so, um, so if you imagine, like, a, a white winter scene or something that's uh, where the screen is, is mostly white, I would say maybe 80% or so, just rough figures. So if you have maybe about this much white showing, that's about when the uh, the, the ABL will kick in. Okay, so you're saying the screen. ABL kicks in as a... From you know, based on a measurement of total power consumption, in that sense. Um, I don't know if it's total power consumption, um, but it's it's how much white is being uh, displayed on the screen. So how bright, how much? Um, I guess, maybe it's how much power on uh, overall on the screen is being shown. So. Makes sense. Um, so I guess it like. 
then on the topic of longevity, I mean, like, one of these monitors is not cheap. I mean, like, I, I'm an NEC Spectre View user yeah. primarily myself. Uh, yeah. You know, I expect the screen to last in like five, six years, yeah. kind of thing. Like, do we expect this to last five, six years? Like, warranties not that long. Is yeah. It? Yeah. Well, um, we're definitely, of course, working to make sure that these kinds of products last for as long as it is needed uh, for the particular market. We haven't released a warranty um, for this monitor yet, but that again will be available towards the end of the year. I guess, what is a typical uh, ESO Color Edge CG series warranty? Yeah, all of our other Color Edges are five year warranty. Okay. Um, so, and but they will last you even longer than that. So, I mean, we, we boast the longevity and the, uh, the color accuracy all the way through the lifetime of the monitor. So. I guess that then, uh, in comparison with NEC, and I guess like the NEC Spectra View products, usually, I would say coming in with about maybe 30 to 50 percent cheaper, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we buying with ESO that we don't get with mm -hmm. NEC Spectra View? Well, you're getting true color accuracy, you're getting... Uh, like true color accuracy, you want to... Qualify yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, we're, we're covering all of the uh, color spaces that are needed for the industry. 99% Adobe RGB, etc. Again, we have our built-in calibration center sensor. You're ensuring that you have the color accuracy at all times uh, as well. Uniformity across the screen. Well, across the screen with our uh, we call DUE Digital Uniformity, um, which is also yeah. available though from NEC, from Barco, from. <laughs> Like basically mm -hmm. anyone who's creating yeah. a color critical model. Like, yeah. oh, sorry, continue. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but basically the whole package uh, that and, and all of our monitors again are produced in-house so we can ensure that uh, they are measured and accurate when they leave the factory so there's you know from us to the customer so are you implying though that like a lot of these other manufacturers are piecemealing out their monitors more than ESO is but because like I mean ESO is still not doing their own LCD panel mm -hmm. But I mean, like, say, NEC, for example, with their production facility, does NEC do any less in house production than ESO does? Or what exactly is happening? I guess like, I feel like, so, you know, yeah. somewhat unfair yeah. to ask you, especially yeah, yeah. like NEC does also yeah. does not seem to have a display booth here, which is kind of weird. But, oh, they don't uh, have a... Uh, well, they, they have a booth here, but they're doing other stuff there. Like, yeah, you see, there's the yeah. NEC booth, and they don't even use Spectre View displays there, so I don't know. But hmm. anyway, yeah. that aside, like, I mean, like, how about put it this way, like, so as a studio using, say, six monitors, mm -hmm. uh, and we like what is available in the Color Edge CG series, but we don't need that many Spectre Photometers, like, is there an option for us to, you know, like, cut costs on other monitors and use external uh, spectrophotometers, mm -hmm. uh, but still have the same capabilities of the CG series uh, otherwise? Yeah, or? yeah. Uh, we have a, a sort of, um, um, uh, again, I mentioned earlier, a CS series. Um, okay. One of the major differences between that and the CG series is that it does not have a built-in uh, calibration sensor, um, but that is compatible with a number of uh, external calibration sensors, so you can still achieve that color accuracy with the reliable panel okay. and all the other features. But is, is, are the panels exactly the same, or all the electronics the same, other than the spectrophotometer then? Um, other than that, and there might be a couple of other, depending on the model, um, variations as well in the specifications. It's kind of model by model, depending on what that model is. I mean, like, in so. general, is there some kind of generalization we can make between CS and CG other than the spectral itself? I think the calibration sensor is going to be the biggest, uh, okay. biggest difference between it. Okay, so not necessarily noticeable other than the significant convenience mm -hmm. and yeah. just having this yeah. um, Some of the CGs will cover a wider color space for, say, um, the broadcast and film industry with DCI-P3, uh, that sort of thing. CS is, again, a little bit more for um, hobbyists, which tend to fall into areas like photography, design, uh, that sort of thing. So are they still covering close to 99% Adobe? 99, all of them are 99% Adobe RGB. So is this the DCI-P3 is where the big variation is? Yeah, DCI-P3, um, our 4Ks also support Rec 2020 as well. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, okay, Rachel. That's great. Is there anything else you want to add? Are there any new products other than? Uh, yes. Not, not necessarily a, a, a new product, but um, with our current lineup, which you see over here, yes. uh, this is our range of 24 to 31.1 inch okay. uh, varying resolutions up to 4K. Uh, you may be familiar with some of these products already. Yes. New this year, um, these products all offer an optional HDR 
uh, support, um, which means that uh, from ASO we can provide a uh, lookup table that supports the H, uh, HLG and PQ gamma curves for HDR. So you can uh, essentially simulate the HDR environment. Um, now these monitors don't reach the high brightness than say the CG3145 with the 1000, uh, but it can again simulate that uh, that range from the darks to the lights so throughout the workflow. How, like, yeah. That sounds like simulate the range. How exactly yes. are you simulating the range yeah. of high brightness? So it's um, it kind of comes close to uh, uh, again the uh, the ratio between how you see uh, the darks and the lights and how many steps are between them. Um, uh, it, it's a bit difficult to, to explain without, without actually showing it. Um, but with the HLG and the uh, PQ curves, you can um, essentially see roughly how your image is going to look in an actual HDR environment. And the reason why this is useful is it's now supporting the uh, entire uh, HDR workflow from shooting to um, VFX compositing and color grading. So when you get to this step, which is the color referencing stage, you're not going to have to make any really drastic changes to ensure that your content looks the way you want it to look. Okay. So this is for like final finishing. These monitors yeah. will give you a pretty good idea so at least you're not shooting and losing something. Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. So it's it's all for consistency across the workflow. So we're not just introducing just the end part of the workflow. We're not supporting everything all the way from the start to finish. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, Rachel. Thanks. Okay. <laughs>